Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Arba Kumsin. We start off from the eastern region, town of Suhum, where the Electoral Commission has shut down its offices after unidentified thugs attacked and ransacked it over the ongoing voter transfer exercise. The thugs reportedly threatened to harm the EC officials if the votes of some persons living outside the constituency are not transferred to the constituency. They reportedly carried away a printer, a laptop and some gadgets being used by the EC officials. Let's go live to the community. Maxwell Kudako of our sister station at FM is in the town monitoring development and joins me on the line. Good afternoon to you, Maxwell. Good afternoon, Arwa. Maxwell, if you can hear me, uh, first of all, what is the situation on the ground? Yeah, the situation is calm. Uh, I can confirm and report that it is calm. Uh, this morning, uh, the police sent uh, personnel from Kibi to protect life and property, including the EC official. But officials of the electoral commission in the Suhum uh, district say that their lives uh, has come under threat, so they cannot operate today. They are still recovering from the trauma and the shock they went through uh, yesterday. So uh, they are not working today. They have not been working today. They closed the office. Uh, I spoke with an assistant electoral officer, Mr. Morgan, uh, before midday, and he told me that uh, the tax followed them to their house and then threaten to kill them. So they are not even safe living in their own uh, um, home. So uh, they requested that the police uh, should do some security both in their homes and uh, uh, in their office. A, a couple of people came to uh, effect their transfer or ap apply for transfer of goods. Why others still came uh, to replace their lost ID card, but they were turned out and then asked to come somewhere next week because the EC uh, officials are not working. Uh, personally, the uh, uh, police have not arrested any of these staff, even though uh, the, the staff are people who are known in the town, according to the EC officials. The, EC, the police have not effected any arrest. A while ago, uh, we spoke with the district police commander in charge of the uh, district police, Superintendent Yahaya Munchiraru. And uh, he told me that, yes, the police can assure the needed security and protection for the officials of the EC, and that they assure them to come back to work because they, they are ready to protect them. But the EC officials feel that it is not useful for them to, to start the TV. So, personally, this is the situation. Come up with those things. But none of the task have been arrested so far. Now, um, uh, Maxwell, beyond the obvious issue of security, did the EC say why they decided to shut down the office? First of all, they, they indicated that first their lives are in danger. Because the guys came and they said this is not the first time their office has been attacked. Uh, Mr. Morgan, assistant lecturer officer, told me that a while ago when they started the uh, limited registration exercise. This same staff uh, comforted them, threatened to beat them up and then deal with them. He said they deflated the tie of the district uh, electoral officer, the district director of the EC at the same They deflated his tie uh, some few months back and then it, it took the intervention of God. The, the director nearly ran the car into a ditch and then they, they saw that they, they alive have come under attack. So they are not too safe to treat it. That is one. And then also, uh, most of the equipment they are working with will run fast. If you enter the, the district office where the exercise is certainly uh, happening, you, you see that the materials to be using are scattered all over. The guys scattered the materials in the room and then took a printer. And so one of their printers has also become faulty. So all of these reasons or factors have contributed uh, to closing of 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 work so so now or in the interest. we also so, understand that uh, the NDC in the constituency have been addressing the media and apologizing for their actions during the voter transfer exercise. What exactly have they been saying? 
Well, earlier this morning, the constituency youth organizer, one Mr. Kofiwa Youth, had a brief chat with a section of the media, and then he indicated that, as a matter of fact, the incident happened at their blind side, and that as of yesterday, most of the constituency officers were out of town. They went to Cambodia for a meeting. So it happened at their blind side. So uh, he said that the EC should retain his decision and come back to work. And then he, he pleaded on behalf of, of the party and said he was going to ensure that uh, the incident did not happen again. He further uh, noted that he was instrumental in ensuring that the printer that was picked from the office uh, were returned back to the EC official. So in, in, in a nutshell, he, he, uh, told, uh, he, he said the EC official should, uh, should be confident that the incident they don't happen again, and they should push me to come to work, and then also send the people of the All right, many thanks. Uh, Maxwell Kudoko is with our sister station, Adam FM. He's our correspondent in the Eastern Region. While the violence over the voter transfer exercise is not limited to Suhum in the Eastern Region, the Commission had to suspend the exercise in Bupe in the central Gonja district of the Northern Region after MPP and NDC supporters clashed there over a misunderstanding in the ongoing uh, voter transfer exercise. The Commission was forced to close its offices and uh, you know, police had to be called in as supporters of the two parties went on rampage at the premises. But it appears calm has uh, returned to the area. Uh, we can now speak to District Director of the EC there, Gary but Jacob. Good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Okay. So we understand that calm has returned to the area. But first tell us, what sparked the clashes there? This was uh, yesterday. After it was believed that... Uh, the NDC uh, people brought some uh, two mini buses, uh, believed to be their sympathizers. And so we were in the bid to interrogate where they were coming from. And uh, the NDC MPP uh, agents uh, said they were not going to allow them to register since they were coming from uh, Damango. So in the process of uh, interrogating them, they, they made unnecessary noise and tried to challenge uh, uh, our workers here. So I decided that uh, we should stop the registration immediately in order not to create a nasty scene around. So I ordered that we stop the registration so that uh, the peace officers could send the people away. So when we stopped the registration uh, the, the, the the registration of the transfer applicants we 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 stopped and then we we asked that the offices be closed so that we all leave the scene which we did and everybody left the scene and this morning we are back again to to register the transfer applicant i see now we're seeing a lot of these attacks uh, on the commission and its personnel as the the the, the exercise proceeds. How serious is the commission taking these attacks? Yes, you see, they, they have only magnified it. Central Gonja, for instance, nobody attacked anybody. They were just making unnecessary arguments and the place became very noisy, which I don't I don't want. So in order to calm the situation, the, the, the option I took was to halt the, 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 the process and then order that our offices be closed down. We left. We had wanted to 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 start the process again, but we saw that it was uh, becoming late. We ended it at two thirty, with only fifteen uh, applicants going through the process. All right. Many thanks. That's uh, Gary Bat Jacob. He's the district director of the EC for the. Um Central Gonja District. Now let's hit the campaign trail proper. We start off with the opposition New Patriotic Party flag bearer Nana Ikufu Ado, who is warning a vote to re elect his main opponent, John Dramani Mahama, would be a threat to the nation. The MPP leader, who is continuing his tour of the Greater Accra region today, has been addressing supporters at a rally in the Tema West constituency. Watch. <laughs> And the National Health Insurance System. I mean, we have a 
We have to save Ghana from John Dramani Mahama and secure the future of our country. <laughs> the stay, the continued stay in office of John Dramani Mahama is a threat to the future of our country. This is why in December, the baby, your baby sister knew, your baby sister knew, they're coming to change it. They are buying a better, they're buying a better for your dinner. I buy a better for your dinner, and the second dinner, I bought my dinner. But it's why they're buying a good dinner. You will be sad as a sad boy. Yes, I'm a sad boy. You are people who are sad, sir, and I do not have a gun for. Let us see, Cato, if you are coming here, and not say, I'm a man who is born. You are a man who is 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 a man. And the National Health Insurance System. I think. I mean, we have a lot of I think there are some of the who are not going to go in our place. And I'm saying, it's scared by the churches. I mean, we have a lot of We have to save Ghana from John Dramani Mahama and secure the future of our country. <laughs> The stay, the continued stay in office of John Dramani Mahama is a threat to the future of our country. This is why in December, your baby, your baby sister knew, your baby sister knew, they're coming to change it. They are buying a better, a baby and a four year old man. A buy a baby boy, 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 well, whilst uh, his opponents may be urging the electorate to kick him out of office, John Dramani Mahama's appointees are also crisscrossing the country, appealing to voters to keep him in office to continue transforming the country. As you may be aware, the chief of staff, Julius Deborah, has been campaigning in the Upper West region. He's been telling voters there it would be unfair not to give President Mahama a second term. <laughs> As the chief of staff campaigns in the north, Vice President Kwesi Bekwe Emisa Arthur has been 
con continuing his tour of the eastern region. Today, he's been in the Achim Akroso area where he took the opportunity to hit out at critics of the government who claim the Mahama administration has done little to improve the lives of Ghanaians. Mr. Misa Arthur said, quote, Sometimes you need to lift the short ones high before they could see the good works undertaken by government. End quote. Kofi Sian is our reporter on the ground. He joins us on the telephone with more. Kofi, can you confirm that the vice president made those comments that sometimes you need to lift the short ones high before they could see the good works undertaken by government? Well, uh, but that is true. Apparently, the crowd that had gathered there uh, had carried a high have carried so that I one of the supporters. So the vice president sought to find out from uh, them why they had carried the person so that high. And the crowd uh, apparently told the vice president that the person is very short. That is why uh, they had to carry him or her. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, he was in a, in a sort of mocking people who are very short. And he said that uh, people who are very short. Uh, even though they see uh, what is happening in the country, we need to lift them shoulder high before they can appreciate what government has been doing for the people of Ghana. So we was actually talking about the achievement of the NDC uh, in the areas of uh, road infrastructure, in the areas of education, and the provision of portable water for residents of Eastern region. So, uh, the vice president uh, said this when uh, he met with the people and chief of Akoso here in the Eastern region. He's taking his second uh, meeting or tour to uh, places like Atiyase, and we are currently in Atiyase, where he's meeting with party supporters and sympathizers of the NDC. All right, many thanks. Kofi Sian is our Eastern Regional Correspondent. Let's turn our attention on to the people who are mandated to ensure sanity and peace prevails before, during, and after the December 7 elections. I'm talking about the Ghana Police Service, which has, over the last few days, been conducting simulation exercises to test their preparedness for the upcoming polls. Inspector General of Police, John Kudalo, charged personnel not to let their ethnic affiliations influence their duty to protect and serve the citizens during this year's elections. Uh, we as the police institution is preparing for the elections if we started preparing for since last year. And as the days go by, we have to try to be very preventive of the women who are supporting in competing the work of the police, also in support of logistics, and also in general, and in memory of the government, that we as an institution to be able to deliver. That's why I feel so that the police institution cannot be interrupted. So first, we've come to as a very better stakeholder, whose policies and actions and actions can bring civil society to society. Because shelter is one of the things of life. As far as we are concerned, shelter was the Maria, the main controller, or the main lander. If we decide not to increase the terrorists, we need to change the game, the rules of the game, by saying that this was one of us are pretending, those of you who are building your houses, we are doing this and doing that, can be a lot of approval to the society. And still on the upcoming polls, the Electoral Commission has charged political parties to study electoral laws properly to ensure strict accordance on election day. Speaking at the launch of the guidelines for candidates and their agents today in Accra, EC Chairperson Charlotte Say said it was important for party agents to understand the electoral process. So far, just for the presidential slots, we have had as many as 23 persons speaking of nomination forms. This is made up of 16 political parties and seven independent presidential aspirants. There are hundreds of parliamentary aspirants across the nation who, are, who have also picked up nomination forms. So clearly this is going to be a very, um, very tough competitive elections with a high level of interest in, in contesting. 
for all the candidates who have picked up nomination forms. It is important that the forms are filled out properly and submitted to the EC before they can be confirmed as candidates for the 2016 elections. And that is why we're launching this guide this morning. This guide helps the various presidential and parliamentary aspirants and their agents understand the requirements that they have to meet in order to become accepted as candidates and in order for them to successfully compete in the elections. And that's how we wrap up the show. Thanks for tuning in throughout this week. Remember, you can catch the show on YouTube if you miss the live broadcast. I'm Arva Kinsen. Join us same time next week. In the meantime...